Alright, what we're doing next, now before when we were looking at radicals they were pretty easy because they were actually perfect roots. And what I've done is I've, over here I've written actually some of our perfect roots. These are of course square roots. So uh, this is the number that we're squaring and then these are basically the values that are perfect roots. So uh, one, the second power is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, uh, 4 squared 16. So a lot of times I'll use those as reference. Uh, most of you guys have those memorized up to about say I don't know 12 or something like that. Uh, but once you get higher than that it gets a little confusing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to take the square root of 50. Well as you can see 50 is not a perfect square. You don't see 50 anywhere on this list right here. You've got something really close 49 but 50 wouldn't be there. 8 squared of course is 64. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to simplify this radical. And this is a skill that you guys will need all throughout math, especially when you're doing uh, any kind of math, whether it's geometry or, uh, you know, some upper level algebra type stuff. So make sure that you know how to simplify radicals. All right. Well, 50, we said, is not a perfect square. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce this thing called the product rule. And what the product rule says is if you are uh, taking the square root of a product of two things, A times B, that you can break that up as to the square root of A times the square root of B. All right, now the product rule actually goes both ways. So if we wanted to, if we had the square root of A times the square root of B, we could actually condense those into the square root of A times B. All right, so what we have is we have the square root of 50. Well, we said 50 is not a perfect square. So now what we do is we look for, are there any factors of 50 that are perfect squares? And what you should see over here is that 25 is a perfect square and it's a factor of 50. Now if there's more than one perfect square that goes into 50 we would actually want to pick the largest one. So if I gave you something like I don't know uh, 72 you know 72 4 will go into 72 9 will go into 72 but 36 will also so we would use 36 so you always want to pick the largest one if there's more than one. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 50 is really 25 times 2. So those are the two uh, numbers that will multiply together to give me 50. And we pick these two, not randomly, but one has to be a perfect square and the other one is the other uh, factor that will multiply along with 25 to give me 50. So what the product rule says is we can break this up as to the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Well, square root of 25, we can find that by uh, just taking the square root of it. Squared at what can we multiply together to give us 25? And that will be 5. So our answer is going to be the square root, or 5 times the square root of 2. So that is the simplified form for that radical. Let's look at another one. Uh, this time we've changed the game a little bit. Instead of doing the square root, this time we're doing the cube root. So we're trying to find some number that we can multiply by itself 3 times to give us 54. Well, over here, what I've done, and a lot of times it's beneficial, I just wrote down some perfect cubes. So I wanted to see, is 54 a perfect cube? Well, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed 8, 3 cubed 27, 4 cubed 64. So as you can see, uh, 54 would fall somewhere in between here. So if you actually type this in your calculator, you get some type of a decimal, but we're not interested in a decimal answer. So what we'll do is we'll say the cube root of 54. Well, we know it's not a perfect cube, so we're going to try to break it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for a perfect cube that is a factor of 54. Well, 1 goes into everything, so we can't use that. 8 won't go into 54, but 27 will. So we're going to say it's really 27 times 2. So the product rule says that we can break this up as to the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. Well, the cube root of 27, uh, we of course know, will be 3 times the cube root of 2. There you go.